another important disease that is sheep pox and goat pox so this is one of the viral infection this is the one which is showing high mortality and this belongs to the family pox vector and this is the largest dna virus enveloped virus and this is uh, by definition this disease is a highly contagious disease of sheep and goats characterized by fur ocular and nasal discharges and the formation of pock lesions on the skin respiratory as well as the gastrointestinal mucosa the morbidity rates reach up to 70 to 90% whereas the mortality rates up to 5 to 10% and they be even go up to 100% this is the global distribution of sheep pox and goat pox 2010 2013 and 2015 there you can appreciate increased spread of this infection over the period clinical signs sudden onset of fever discharges from the nose eyes and salivation loss of appetite reluctance to move depression emaciation and the skin lesions appear one to two days extending all over the body and they are most evident or most obvious on skinless portions like face eyelids ears perineum and tail lesions may also be seen on the mucous membranes of nostrils mouth and vulva acute respiratory distress mortality peaks about 2 weeks after the onset of clinical signs especially the skin lesions abortions occur because of the secondary complications of this disease these are the skin lesions that are appear on the surface of skin so definitely you can easily differentiate between pox and blue tongue by observing these things even ppr and this is the goat pox affected herd incidence of the disease has gone up to 80% and the mortality is about 50% this is the one which i personally visited and from this i have collected the samples for the goat pox isolation etc so some animals are showing mucopurulent nasal discharges and this is the scab lesions that are appearing on the hairless portions of the skin which are highly evident uh, here you can appreciate the formation of scab lesions imagine a small boil or small pimple on your face or boil on your skin portion definitely cause lot of irritation to us if the animal is suffering with such a kind of lesions definitely the animal suffers a lot and it unable to take feed properly water properly and it suffers a lot because of the pain caused by these lesions and ultimately this in turn leads to the secondary bacterial complications which in turn leads to the pneumonia respiratory distress all these things leads to the high mortality of this particular disease condition so the lesions of this uh, uh, disease or they develop on lung kidney spleen lymph nodes and other internal organs along with the lesions on mouth nerves eye and eyelids mucous membranes ulcerate slough off becomes necrotic because of the secondary bacterial complications and the nodules in the digestive respiratory and urogenital system leads to the complications like uh, digestive disturbance respiratory in the respiratory tract it leads to the pneumonia and in the urogenital system it causes abortions so animals with lung lesions they show respiratory signs uh, including cough pneumonia nodules in the digestive system it leads to the diarrhea these are the malignant lesions that observed in sheep pox and goat pox uh, lungs get affected even the kidney gets affected with the disease and then what are the samples to be collected for the diagnosis so here full skin thickness biopsies if possible vesicular fluid skin scrapings lymph node aspirates whole blood can be collected in heparin or edta and paired serum samples for serology so here while transport of these skin thickness biopsies if that specimen is for virus isolation transport in if required transport in 10% glycerol saline if it is not required if the laboratory is very near at to your place simply transport the sample in a sterile container on ice uh, so that it reaches the lab- laboratory as quickly as possible otherwise you use 10% glycerol saline so that this 10% glycerol uh, shouldn't cause damage to the virus that's why you take a big piece of uh, skin tissue so that the glycerol shouldn't enter at the middle of the skin tissue and should not cause any damage to the virus or destroy the virus diagnostic methods are agid that is agar gel immunodiffusion test elisa using p32 antigen this test is widely used for the diagnosis indirect elisa for serology and in order to differentiate between sheep pox and goat pox pcr of p32 gene and then going for restriction enzyme analysis then pcr of rpo 30 gene and sequencing helps to differentiate between sheep pox and goat pox and to the best of my knowledge and the 
literature says that under indian subcontinent under the scenario of indian subcontinent the sheepox and goatpox they are showing high host specificity uh, that means the sheepox is not causing disease in goats goatpox is not causing disease in sheep they are highly host specific and coming to the differential diagnosis the clinical signs of sheepox and goatpox itself they are highly characteristic and they need not be differentiated with other diseases but in mild forms it should be differentiated from multiple insect bites by the history you can know about the multiple insect bites by the by observing the environment or by observing the farm scenario you can able to know about the multiple insect bites and not only that in case of multiple insect bite only few animals get affected not the entire farm then contagious ectema where lesions are confined to the mouth and blue tongue it's very easy to differentiate it from blue tongue ppr already we discussed uh, we discussed about the clinical signs of ppr which is a nemoenteritis complex uh, and there is no nodules on the skin surface in case of ppr photosensitization history of eating poisonous plants dermatophilosis here dermatophilosis it is one of the clinical disease that is caused by dermatophilus congolensis in case of sheep and this disease or the seasonal occurrence of this disease is rainy season because in rainy season if the animal wets for a long duration of time there is a possibility for the multiplication of this bacteria which in turn leads to the skin lesions and the patchy areas of the skin gets affected and they will be peeled off that, that is the main clinical sign that you observe in case of dermatophilosis whereas in case of sheepox or goatpox the main incidence or the major time for the occurrence of this disease is march and april so do, by this uh, itself you could able to differentiate between dermatophilosis and sheepox and goatpox then parasitic pneumonia then caseous lymphadenitis in case of caseous lymphadenitis lymph nodes gets enlarged which are very hard to touch whereas the other clinical signs you do not appreciate and mange by observing ten, by observing the skin scrapings in 10% potassium hydroxide you could able to differentiate between sheepox and mange treatment and control there is no effective treatment in majority of the viral infections and it's only a symptomatic treatment and antibiotic therapy to control the secondary bacterial complications fluid therapy and feeding light gruel so and um, these uh, all these three viral infections uh, they are causing lot of damage to the oral mucosa that's why feeding practices are very very important giving light gruel to the animal so that the animal takes the feed easily and it gives some energy to the animal for its survivability coming to the vaccination there are clear cut vaccinations for sheepox and goatpox and there are clear cut vaccines for us for sheepox it may be from romanian fanner or it may be from a, a sheepox virus srinagar strain or ranipet strain here the dose is more than 10 tcid 50 and in case of goatpox it is uttarkashi strain the dose is 1 into 10 to the power of 3 tcid 50 the age of vaccination from 3 months onwards and you can start at 4 months and advisable to vaccinate the animals during kidding season or before the onset of breeding season so that the young lambs or kids will get cholesterol immunity